Hi, this is Steph with Belladonna Dyes, and today's project is going to be a glitch variant. For this project, I'm going to center the shirt. So I have it turned inside out from the pre-wash, and I'm using a washable marker to mark out the center points. And then I'm going to tuck one sleeve inside the other sleeve, and what this is going to do is create symmetry in the pattern. When you open the shirt up, it's going to have a mirror image from left to right, and the saturation should be similar on the front and then on the back. This shirt's a little bit dry. I mean, it's still damp, but it was at the bottom of the pile in the Panda Spin Dryer, so it's a little bit drier than some of the other projects. So it's really wrinkly. So as you're doing this, try to smooth out as many wrinkles as you can. I wanna give a big shout out to the newest channel member, Kathy Suter. Thank you so much for your channel membership, Kathy. All of your proceeds will go back into the channel so I can continue to bring out new content. I flipped the shirt over just because I'm left-handed. It's easier for me to work in this direction. I used a washable marker to draw a line on from the bottom right-hand corner up over to the top left. Now I'm going to pleat along this line creating the glitch. So in the past, you've seen me do live videos with Scott Walker where we just have the shirt laid out flat. This is where the variant is coming in. So it's centered. And then instead of starting at the bottom and working my way up to the top, I'm starting at the diagonal and working from the diagonal from the bottom up to the top. We watched Scott do one during one of the last lives and his shirt turned out really cool, so I thought I would try it out. My variation onto that was centering it first. So I'm just gonna let you watch how I do this here. You know, these glitches are challenging, but once you get the hang of it, they're really easy to do and I think they're a lot of fun because it's kinda like the messier the better and I like that because I'm not perfect, so if there's any flaws, it really does get hidden in all of the folds and then in the sinew wraps. So we just did the diagonal fold. Now I twisted it in front of me and I'm gonna call this going vertical. Maybe it's just diagonal in the other direction. I don't know, I don't really think it matters, but the whole thing with these is to just keep twisting it in different directions and pleating it. Once I get this all pleated up, then I'm going to pleat it up again. And the last pleat is the hardest part because you have all of those thick folds. Like it's almost like a basket weave and you got to try to somehow scrunch all that up. I mean, that really is kind of the best way to describe it, but it's basically just like an accordion fold at the very end. Once I figure out the best way that I can do all that, I'm just going to loosely secure it with rubber bands and then I'm gonna tie it off with sinew. I've done it with rubber bands and I've done it with sinew and I have found that to make the glitch look really good, I definitely recommend tying it off with sinew because it's going to create those white lines, give you the contrast and give you that glitchy sort of look. I'm using my sinew puller and matching caddy set that I got from Jen and John. You can find the shop over on Etsy and the shop name is Shop Boredom with Jen. And you'll find a link down below in the description box. It'll take you right over to the shop and you can get yourself one. Major game changer if you're going to be doing tie dyeing, you really need a good sinew puller. If you're brand new to tie dyeing and you don't know what sinew is, sinew is a wax covered string. Its job is to resist the dye. 
So hopefully everywhere that I'm wrapping with sinew is going to have a nice white line. So what I like to do is wrap it around two or three times and pull it tight. It catches on itself because it's waxy. Then I wrap it around two or three or four more times and I pull it even tighter. And I'm talking about pulling it so tight that my knuckles will turn white. Next, I mark out my pattern with a washable marker. Not necessary, it's just something that I like to do. But when you add your dye, you wanna make sure that you add it at a really steep diagonal line. And also, when choosing your colors, you wanna choose colors that are very contrasting. And I recommend trying to choose colors that split a lot during the ice dyeing process. Now, the fun one for me on this is a lot of these colors I've never even tried before. So I'm really excited to see how it's going to turn out. This project I'm using all of Dharma Trading Company's special order colors. So that's what the abbreviation is. Dharma Trading Company, DTC, special order, and then the name of the color. So they're available on Dharma's website, but you have to order five pounds or more to get them. And that's just way too much dye. So I order my colors over on Facebook in the tie-dye supplies marketplace. And there is a link down below in the description box. It'll take you right on over there. I'm getting my dyes from Kathy Greger. She's fully stocked up, ready to go. She has your colors, whatever you need, she'll send it right out. She's super easy to work with, very professional. Uh, everybody in that group is awesome. So whoever you end up ordering from, you will not be disappointed. Lately, I've been trying to not waste as much dye. So I use this little foil pan that I got from the dollar store to collect all the dye that fell off of the project during the application. And I'm gonna use it down the road for other projects. So my setup here is I have the over the sink strainer and I've placed it over top of a tote. So as the ice melts, all that dye is gonna go down and maybe I'm gonna create a twofer, hint, hint. Okay, so as you noticed here, I started by placing my ice around the project. My thought process on this was, if I try to put the ice right on top of the project, it's gonna knock all of the dye off. So I think it worked out really good by surrounding it with ice, and now I'm just beefing up the dye because you know, a little bit got knocked off during moving it and everything like that, and there was a lot of white space and everything. I think this worked out really good, so try it out for yourself. Now, this is my Frigidaire Nugget Ice Machine Ice, and if you're going to get yourself one of these, make sure that you get the second generation machine, and it's called the Gallery. It is amazing. I love my little machine. So I just gave the project a quick little sprinkle of soda ash for good measure, and then I'm just gonna fill up this whole thing 
with ice and then I'm going to set it aside and let it batch. Now it's recommended that you let the project batch at 70 degrees or higher for at least 24 hours and this project batch for the full 48 hours. For the rinse out, I follow Dharma's instructions. So I start by using cold water that's going to remove any soda ash that might still be reacting within the fabric. And then I increase my water up too hot and I rinse until the water runs pretty much clear. From here, I take it to the washing machine and I like to do hot water cycles using Kirilon, which is a professional textile detergent. And then I do a final hot water cycle using Millsoft and Millsoft is a professional fabric softener. And I get both of those from Dharma and you will find the links down below in the description box. Then I'll put the project in the dryer and I'll iron it and we'll come back and we'll see the results. Well, here it is guys. Here's our glitch variant after it's been washed and dried. And I think the shirt turned out awesome. It's not overly glitchy. It's something else. It's maybe like more of a mindscape or it's probably not even that. It's just, you know, it's glitch because it's got the white lines, but the fact that it was centered and then done on the diagonal first, it looks completely different than what we normally see. I think it's super duper cool, not necessarily overly glitchy. Now I'm loving this color combination. It, it's um, totally out of my comfort zone. You guys know that I don't typically use earth tones. Um, and I think it's beautiful. That faded denim is a gorgeous blue. I love it. I'm not a big fan. I, I mean, I like blue dyes, but I'm not overly a big fan of blue dye because they don't really split. And a lot of times they're just really super bright, like almost neon looking to me. This is just a really nice, well, blue is not an earth tone, but you know what I mean? It just, it complements the browns in this really well. I love it. Uh, the Too Fancy Mustard, I'm thinking it might be the color that's throwing out the like the orangey tones. I'm not 100% sure, but it has to be the Too Fancy Mustard. And then Tea Leaves is the brown color, and I think it's really beautiful. And then I love the white space on this because without the white space, I don't think the patterns would show up, the colors wouldn't pop. So overall, I'm just really happy with the way the shirt turned out. Uh, like there's like these little squid guys with giant eyeballs. I just keep seeing them all over the shirt. I don't know. It's just, it's really fun. It's something different. It almost has a really tribal feel to it. I'm not mad at it at all. I think the shirt turned out great. See, like, look, here's a little squid guy with giant eyeballs. <laughs> I don't know. Maybe an octopus, whatever. Anyways, I had a lot of fun making it. It's always fun to try something new. Try, you know, using different colors that I've never used before and you just have fun with it. So overall, I'm really pleased with the way it turned out. So what do you guys think? Please leave me some comments down below. Thank you so much for watching. Please subscribe to my channel, leave a thumbs up, and click the bell and set it to all. That way you get notified of future uploads. And remember, have fun tie-dyeing.